The Italian embassy to the Holy See is set to host a meeting on the war in Ukraine. The meeting is organized with Vatican media. Vatican Secretary of State Cardinal Pietro Perlin will also take part. Joining us now from Rome is Andreas Tonhauser, EWTN Vatican Bureau Chief. Andreas, great to see you as always. Uh, so this meeting is set for tomorrow. What more can you tell us about it? Sure. So Italy's President Sergio Mattarella was meant to meet and discuss with Vatican Secretary of State Cardinal Pietro Parolin in the Italian Embassy to the Holy See tomorrow. Unfortunately, the Italian head of state tested positive for COVID over the weekend and will not be able to participate. The conference, of course, will still take place and it will focus on the so-called Helsinki Accord from 1975. That agreement signed, was signed by 35 European countries at the height of the Cold War, affirming their will to respect fundamental human rights and also fundamental freedoms. It seems that Italy and the Vatican want to join forces in order to move towards an end of the war in Ukraine, and this by diplomatic means. It hasn't been lost on many observers here in Rome that Pope Francis and Cardinal Parolin have referenced the Helsinki Accord quite often in the past few months. For example, during his apostolic trip to Kazakhstan, the Holy Father said that uh, we need leaders who promote mutual understanding and dialogue. They need to, and I quote, give birth to a new spirit of Helsinki. And let's not forget that at one point there were hopes that Pope Francis would meet the head of the Russian Orthodox Church in Kazakhstan in order to intensify peace talks and urge Russia to stop its invasion. Now, as we know, Tracy, this of course didn't happen, but the Holy Father still used the platform to remind world leaders of a mechanism that has worked in the past and brought peace in the long run. And Andreas, um, wondering how is this initiative being received on a political level in Europe? Cardinal Parolin will continue to look for diplomatic ways of reaching out to Russia and Ukraine to make inroads towards peace. He found an ally in Italy's president, Sergio Mattarella, so it seems. However, many European leaders, at least, seem to be less and less willing to support the war that much longer. Some are publicly thinking about leaving some of the territory annexed by Russia to the invaders and to negotiate a peace as a way out for Russia's president, Vladimir Putin. And before I let you go, Andreas, as we know, uh, Pope Francis celebrated Mass today for the Feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe. Uh, what can more can you tell us about that? Yeah, that's right. So Pope Francis celebrated Mass in Our Lady's honor just right here in St. Peter's Basilica. But in these last few days, actually, we've seen Pope Francis honor Mary several times. Last Thursday, for example, the Pope went to the pillar dedicated to the Immaculate Conception at the Piazza di Spagna in the center of Rome. There he prayed for the people of Ukraine. In a very touching moment, the Pope paused with tears in his eyes. And a reporter, so we heard later, asked the Holy Father if he really cried there. And he answered smilingly, un poquito, just, just a little bit. The Pope's tears about the situation in Eastern Europe, of course, made big headlines here in Italy. Because the small anecdote also shows how much he still cares about the Ukraine and the people suffering there from the war. And how very much this topic is still at the heart and mind of the Pope. For the Vatican, the situation in the European country is a top priority. There's no doubt about it. Tracy? All right, Andreas, thank you so much for that report. I always appreciate it. Andreas Tonhauser, EWTN Vatican Bureau Chief. Thank you again.